are planting tomatoes. I have been hardening these off for a couple of weeks now and we are past our frost date. So what I'm first going to do is trim the cotyledons. It's these first seed leaves that look different than the rest of them. And I'm gonna plant them deeper so that way they are covering those nodes. I'm going to place all of my tomatoes in position first. Tomatoes need about 16 to 18 inches of space in between plants. And I'm cutting off the cotyledons as I place them. So it's easy to plant them. I will be trellising my tomatoes with a Florida weave style, which I'll show in a separate video. But if you have trellises, go ahead and place them first before planting. It doesn't matter how big your tomato plants are. You can take the cotyledons off as well as the first sets of leaves and bury them deeper where they will grow roots from those nodes and create stronger plants. I'm giving the soil around just a gentle tap so that way no soil clumps roll onto my tomato plant. I'm also planting companions with my tomatoes, including basil, marigolds, and huckleberries. Marigolds, specifically the Tegetes genus, acts as a preventative against root knot nematodes. Basil is said to increase crop flavor and yield. Huckleberries act as a great trap crop for stink bugs, meaning they attract all the stink bugs to the berries and not the tomatoes. Last but not least, always mulch your plants. Mulch helps retain moisture, soil temperature, maintains pests, and helps reduce the soil splashing onto the leaves. It is time to trim the tomatoes. They are all getting about two to three feet tall. And there is a strategy for pruning tomatoes. First, you have to confirm the variety of your tomato. So if it is determinate, that means that it's only going to grow to a certain height. If it's indeterminate, that means that it will grow indeterminately. In other words, as long as there is no extreme frost or disease or bug infestation, the tomatoes will grow and grow and grow, which is a really good thing, but the tomato bushes or vines can easily get out of control. And so you want to prune them from the very get-go in order to maintain a healthy growth habit. And so what that means is you're gonna be removing suckers. Suckers grow at an angle. So wherever you see the main stalk and the branch, you'll see the sucker growing out from the middle. You will want to remove the suckers up until the second set of flowers. So look for the first set, and then as soon as you see the second set, that is your height where you're gonna be stopping so at. here is the first set of flowers. This would be considered the second set of flowers, the next set of flowers high up on the plant. I also use this opportunity to look at any damaged foliage, check my plants for bugs, and if there are any branches that are falling and touching the ground, I like to remove those as well as disease spreads primarily through soil contact. You can make cuttings out of this one and root them in water for more tomato plants, or you can toss it into the compost. How do you trellis tomatoes? There's many different ways to support a big tomato plant. And there's two different types of tomatoes, but typically I trellis the same way for both of them. There's determinant that are some of your larger tomatoes and only grow to a certain size, like five or six feet. And then there's some that are indeterminate, meaning they will grow on forever like a vine until some frost or extreme weather hits them. How you trellis your tomatoes is going to depend on how many plants you have and your space and setup. At my old homestead, I would grow about a dozen tomatoes max, and so I'd use these individual cages that I really liked and were super strong and sturdy. But whatever you do, don't buy the flimsy wire tomato cages at the garden centers. They're too small and too weak and are not gonna be able to support a full grown tomato plant. You can also use chicken wire or hog panels and create a frame around them. Um, but that's also gonna be limited in height because those are typically three or four feet wide. What I'm doing, 
here at the new homestead is I've got tons of tomatoes, maybe three dozen plants. And so what I'm doing is a style called the Florida weave. The Florida weave is ideal when you've got a bunch of tomatoes and essentially all you're doing is taking bamboo poles or rebar and putting one in between every single plant. As your plants grow, you're going to weave in twine to kind of hold them tight within this structure. You should know that when my husband was putting in these bamboo poles, we have really hard clay. And so what he did first was take some rebar, hammer a hole into the ground, and then he set these bamboo stakes. Start by tying your twine or string on the far end pole. Bring it down to the next pole and tie it around and keep it taut. Continue down the rest of the line. You can move the line down the poles if you have any shorter plants. And then once you get to the end, wrap it back on the other side. Keeping it taut, tie it on the last pole. So here you can see I've got string on both sides here, wrapped around every single one with the plant in between and I'm going to do that all the way down and up as they grow. Already I feel like this method is much easier than putting together a bunch of cages and I can customize the height of the rope based on the size of the plants. You want to do this when the majority of your plants are six to eight inches tall and you'll add another line as your plants get taller. If you have bushes that start to get out of control or fruit that are not being supported by this trellis, you can always tie them directly to the poles. My tomatoes are about three to four feet tall and I've done about three or four strings, one per every foot. So I wanted to give you an update on how this Florida weave system is working. Aside from doing my single strand along the entire tops of the plants, I'm also having to go in and attach certain branches that have fallen out of the trellis and need to be attached individually. I'm also finding, since this is the most plants I've ever planted, that this is really an excellent time to be observing any issues like pests or disease. And so I'm taking account of that as I'm trellising, I'm looking at the plant's foliage and assessing their health. The most important observation I've found about this method is to wrap your string or twine around each individual pole before moving to the next so it's not too loose, but it doesn't need to be terribly tight either.